You are watching Junk Wax Genius. It's the channel on YouTube where a grown man opens old baseball cards and talks about it. Today, our two packs are 91 FLIR Ultra, the first year for FLIR Ultra before they really figured out what they needed to do to be considered truly an upscale brand. And 93 uh, Tops Series 1, still on the lookout, still on the hunt for that Derek Jeter draft pick card in gold foil. We've found the standard issue Jeter a couple of times as we go through these packs. Have not found it with gold foil yet. Hope springs eternal, though. Let's let's see what else we can get. We'll begin, though, with the 91 FLIR Ultra. You do get a logo sticker in here. Not a great sticker, though, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a moment. So FLIR tried to go upscale. They tried to make a premium product. They used foil for wrapping, which kind of signified class in 1991. You do get a logo sticker, but uh, the only thing about it that makes it kind of unique is that the silver background that, that's it. It's kind of a, a mylar type texture to the sticker itself, but the sticker is still just the Cubs logo. The only shiny silver part or a nice effect is around the sticker. It's just a Cubs logo. That's all it is. Disappointing. The cards themselves, though, you do get a full bleed left to right photo with the silver metallic borders at the top and bottom. There's a great performance card from Cecil Fielder. Mike York, rookie card, rookie prospect. Glenn Davis. Greg Cataray, Steve Sachs, there's Greg Gagne, Dick Schofield, Scott Fletcher, a uh, checklist. Uh, I don't have time to read all the names, at least not on this episode. Uh, maybe maybe somewhere in the clips, maybe in the in the description, I'll link to me reading the checklist. Stranger things have happened. There's Ken Caminiti, Sammy Sosa, Lonnie Smith. Sandy Alomar Jr. would have been a nice card to get in 1991. And Derek May. One thing I did notice in the FLIR Ultra with regard to their photography, I'm pretty sure they're all action shots, like all in-game action shots. Maybe, uh, except for the rookie, except for the rookie guy who may not have had a uh, major league moment there. But everybody else, action shots, no posed pictures in front of the batting cage or in the dugout. So uh, nice, nice effort, Fleer. You're trying. I can see you're trying. Um, emphasis on the photography on the back, minimizing the stats just to the most recent um, season and then major league totals. Still a far cry, though, from what Ultra turned into in 1992. Go check some of those uh, related episodes where I open 92 Ultra on the channel which I think is just a beautiful set. They got it right in 92, tweaked it just a little bit in 93. I happen to like 93 a little better than 92. Speaking of 93, let's do Tops Series 1. Gone is the bubblegum. We're not using wax paper here either. We haven't gone all the way to fancy foil, just kind of this cellophane type. All right. Looks like our gold card is not Derek Jeter, but we'll go. It's Cousin Mickey Tetleton. Hi, Cousin Mickey. There's Phil Stevenson, Marquise Grissom, Doug Henry, Vince Horseman. Our gold card is Tim Naring. Kevin Moss. He had a couple years there to cool down after his insanely hot start in 1990. So not quite the, the next Don Mattingly. We do get Mark McGuire. Nice action shot there of him just bashing one. Gino Petrali, Dave Rigetti, Mel Hall. Another lovely landscape card for Jeremy Hernandez. A checklist. Again, I don't have time to read all the names. We would be here all day. Another A's star in Dennis Eckersley. And Franklin Stubbs rocking the hat backwards. All right, for the, uh, the A's fans in the house, we got Eck. We got Big Mac. And you got Junk Wax Genius telling you all about it. It's the channel on YouTube where a grown man opens old baseball cards and talks about it. We'll see you tomorrow with two more packs in the show. Thanks for watching.